This is a movie about the one-of-a-kind Kinkajou, also known as a honey bear, named Vivo and its journey of how he honors his late musician friend's last wish. The movie begins in the bustling streets of Havana, Cuba where people go on with their lives until Andres Hernandez, an elderly musician along with his Kinkajou named Vivo makes his way to the town plaza as per routine. He starts pulling the crowd toward him as he sings a song with Vivo, who shares the same love for music and plays the musical instruments beautifully. Andres tells in his song how he came across Vivo, a little Kinkajou who was stranded in the streets, being chased by hungry dogs but Andres interfered and saved him. When he gained his trust, he noticed how much he enjoyed Andres' music so he named him Vivo and they have been doing their musical shows ever since. Vivo collects tips in his hat from the bystanders as they dance to the melody of Andres and Vivo. After their performance, the duo head to enjoy the sunset with mango treats for Vivo, who is content with his perfect life with Andres. But it all changes, when a letter addressed to Andres, enters the picture. As it happens, the letter came from no other than Marta Sandoval Diaz, Andres lost love from his past. The letter is a reconciliatory attempt from Marta who wishes to relive her glorious past with Andres, inviting him to sing with her for her final concert at Mambo Cabana Miami. She expresses her love for him, which strikes Andres like the Cupid's bow since he has been in love with Marta from the beginning of time. Back in the day, Andres and Marta used to be amazing singers in Havana, Vivo is confused since he does not know who this Marta person is and why she is being given so much importance. Hearing the name of Marta Sandoval, the locals gather around Andres and chip in to finance his trip to Miami so he can have a shot at true love, after all these years. Andres and Vivo get back to their apartment, where Andres opens an old trunk full of Marta's memorabilia. As he takes a trip down the memory lane, he tells Vivo what a dynamic pair he and Marta made. He was madly in love with her, and he was about to reveal his feelings to her after a great show, but when Marta finally got a big career-changing offer from Miami, he hid his love so she could live her dream, getting all the fame she deserved. Cut to the present, Andres is super excited about his second chance at love. He sings to Vivo about going to Miami and finally confessing his love to Marta, by presenting a song he wrote for her when she left, full of his love and pain. As he tries to pack his stuff for the trip, Vivo expresses his despondence since he cannot fathom how someone can come and ruin their perfect lives. Seeing this, Andres tells him that he needs to tell Marta what he has kept in his heart for so long. Vivo steps out onto the rooftop in despair, trying to make sense of things. He is so used to his life here in Havana with his buddy Andres, and cannot wrap his head around the idea that small-town people like them are headed to the big city of Miami. In short, he is just not ready to share Andres with anyone. However, he thinks about how Andres has always been there for him, from rescuing him to becoming friends. Vivo heads back to Andres' apartment to apologize for his behavior but he finds him sleeping on the couch, clutching Vivo's hat in his hands crossed in front of him. Vivo takes the old man's glasses off and replaces the hat in his hand with the song for Marta. After that, Vivo packs the suitcase for Andres, ready for their big adventure tomorrow. The next morning, Vivo rises before Andres. The sun shines on and it seems like a beautiful day to travel. As he begins to apologize to Andres for last night's behavior, he notices the song on the floor. As it happens, Andres passed away peacefully in his sleep. Vivo is still in a state of shock when suddenly a gust of wind enters the apartment, sweeping the song along with it. Desperate to hold on to the last memory of Andres, Vivo fights against the wind to retrieve it, and manages to catch hold of it just as it is about to fall in the fountain of the town plaza. Dark clouds shroud the bright sunny city as if reciprocating Vivo's broken heart. In the night, a candle vigil is arranged at the town plaza as all the locals gather to commemorate their old friend Andres. At the funeral, Vivo notices Gabby, the daughter of Rosa, the niece-in-law of Andres. Gabby relates to Vivo's grief since she recently lost her father Carlos. Since she thinks of Vivo as extended family, she insists he joins her for their ride back home to Florida. But Vivo leaves, refusing her offer. When everyone pays their respect and final goodbyes to Andres, Vivo expresses his sorrow, wishing for just one last song. Suddenly he remembers the song for Marta, and this is when he finds purpose in life again. Pushing his grief aside, Vivo plans to set out for Miami so he can deliver the song to Marta in person. Just as he is figuring out how to go, he notices a rather unpleasant tune and finds Gabby trying her hands on a flute. Deciding to take her up on her offer from before, Vivo heads to her but notices that her mom Rosa is not a big fan of pets, she tells Gabby that wild animals like kinkajous are not allowed on airplanes. Just then, one of Andres' friends, Montoya shows up, bringing with him Andres' musical instruments that he passes on to Gabby since she has such a profound love for music. 
Taking it as his cue, Vivo hides in the bag of instruments while Rosa and Gabby are distracted and they head to the airport to catch their flight. Once they have reached their home in Key West, Florida, Vivo is struggling to get out of the musical instruments bag placed on the kitchen table. He is slightly disoriented because of the traveling, plus he has no way of knowing what the time is. He mistakes the microwave oven timer for a clock, and just then Rosa walks into the kitchen, holding a uniform, trying to be all cheery and excited for Gabby for her first ever cookie sale with the Girl Scout troop sand dollars. Gabby does not seem interested as she warms her food in the oven, and tells her mother that she finds the Girl Scout troop a tad bit boring for her liking since there is more to life than selling cookies. Rosa is determined to see her kid bond with other kids as she knows her daughter tends to shut herself around people, and she fears she will end up being lonely when she grows up. When Gabby shows her the exit video she has made for the sand dollars where she turns them into zombie clouds, Rosa has had enough, so she orders Gabby that she will not have it any other way. She must go to the cookie sale, as she let Gabby have her hair colored purple, despite disagreeing strongly about it. With that, Rosa leaves. Meanwhile, Vivo is seen trying to unzip the bag using his tail but accidentally it gets stuck in the zipper. Stuck in the painful situation, Vivo waits patiently till he thinks the mother and daughter have left the kitchen. Thinking that the coast is clear, he tries to yank his tail free, which causes the bag to move around in the kitchen. What Vivo does not know is that Gabby had not left the kitchen, so she assumes the bag has some sort of spookiness around it as it is rolling around the house all by itself. The bag ends up stopping in Gabby's room. Gabby follows the bag and prepares to attack the ghost inside with her hockey stick. Just as she unzips the bag, her excitement goes through the roof when she realizes it was Vivo all along. Her excited screams scare Vivo, who just wants to finish the task at hand and deliver Andre's song to Marta. Running from Gabby who wishes to put her best friend's bracelet on Vivo's arm, Vivo tries to hide in a closet but stops dead in his tracks when he notices the empty pet houses in one. Just then, they hear Rosa coming toward the room so in an attempt to hide Vivo, Gabby smacks him away with her hockey stick and just then, Rosa enters the room. She is holding Gabby's scout uniform yet again, which she found in the microwave oven this time. Suddenly she freaks out while looking at something and Gabby thinks she is done for, but it turns out that Rosa was simply freaked out due to a packet of chips in the room since they have a house rule about not eating in the rooms because it can attract animals and insects. Leaving Gabby with no choice but to agree to go to the cookie sale, Rosa exits the room excitedly to get ready, ignoring Gabby's ruse of getting hives from the uniform. Gabby and Vivo breathe a sigh of relief as that was quite close. Gabby is frustrated because her mom do not understand who she really is. She sings to Vivo using her musical instruments about who she is and how her mother wants to turn her into a regular girl, but that simply does not resonate with Gabby, which makes her a rebel in her mother's eyes. Vivo manages to escape from Gabby's window and heads out in the streets of Florida, trying to figure out this new place, and more importantly, how he is going to get to Marta. As he walks past the green belts of the neighborhood, he notices fake plastic flamingos erected in the grass, giving Vivo a weird vibe about the whole place. Just as he is planning his next move, suddenly he notices a bus behind him with Marta's final concert painted all over it. Figuring out that this bus is en route to Miami, he gets on the bus but when the people notice him, they freak out, and the bus driver throws him out of the bus, using the fire extinguisher on him. He drives the bus away as he is applauded by the passengers for his bravery, leaving behind a scared Vivo on the streets of Florida. Just then, a giant pit bull hovers over Vivo, preparing to eat Vivo for lunch. Vivo frantically runs to get away from the chasing pit bull and jumps inside a house to save his life. Just as he notices, the vibrant room is none other than Gabby's. Vivo knows he is stuck with this eccentric kid but when Gabby says she knows his purpose for coming to Florida, he is taken aback. When Vivo escaped earlier, Gabby found the letter from Marta addressed to Andres and figures out that Andres was planning to meet his lost love, but fate had other plans and he passed away. What she cannot figure out is why a kinkajou would want to go to such lengths to meet Marta. This is when Vivo reveals the song stowed away in his hat, and gives it to Gabby. She reads the lyrics and realizes that Andres never got to express his love to Marta. Then and there, she decides to help Vivo deliver the song to Marta, as deep in her heart, Gabby misses her father dearly. She searches the venue for the final concert on her laptop, and realizing they do not have a lot of time, she goes to her mother with Vivo in her backpack. Gabby tries to persuade Rosa into taking her to the final concert of Marta Sandoval, claiming this is the last time they will ever be able to witness Marta's performance. But Rosa is one step ahead of her. Aware of her daughter's tactics to avoid the cookie sale, Rosa asks Gabby to get dressed for the cookie sale. 
When this plan fails, Gabby and Vivo return to Gabi's room where she brainstorms and decides to book bus tickets herself so she can get Vivo to Mambo Cabana, where Marta is going to perform that evening. Gabby takes Vivo to Key West Florida's downtown on her bike, again in her not-so-clean backpack, to get the bus tickets. Just as she is about to head over to the bus, she notices the kiosk of sand dollars, with the girls trying to sell cookies while raising awareness about endangered species. Gabby tries hard to get away unnoticed but the scout leader tracks her down and stops her, inquiring why she is not dressed in her uniform as it is against the rules to participate in a cookie sale without a uniform. Gabby tries to stall but when she is bombarded with a lot of questions, she reveals Vivo from her bag and tells the girl she was out rescuing him. Gabby tries to pass him as a possum but the blonde girl corrects her that this is a kinkajou, and he needs to be properly vaccinated and kept in observation for a week to avoid harm to other animals, as mentioned in the Dala Sands manual. Gabby notices that passengers are boarding the bus, so she pretends to be done with the vaccination already, upon which the blonde scout asks her to show the vaccination card. Seeing this as her chance to get away, she lies about the certificate being in her bike's carrier, and she dashes for the bus but it is too late, and it has already started moving. The Girl Scouts sense something is fishy and they follow Gabby on their scooters, while Gabby makes a run on her bike. Vivo tries to distract them by throwing things on them from Gabby's backpack. The girls chase Gabby who manages to escape them until she gets stuck on a bridge and ends up landing in a boat. Determined to rescue the Kinkachu, the Girl Scouts decide to follow Gabby and Vivo. On the massive sand pit on the boat, Vivo is relieved to find the song that got lost in the sand. When he notices that they are headed in the opposite direction of their original destination, he feels defeated, but he notices a raft and he unplugs it. A ray of hope fills him as he will soon be able to deliver Andre's song to Marta, but it is short-lived as the raft sinks when Gabby throws her bike on it. Furious that they lost the only means to escape, Vivo has a meltdown as he vents his feelings. When he is done, he notices Gabby has improvised a makeshift boat from the items available on the boat. Much to Vivo's surprise, the boat floats. After some consideration, Vivo jumps on the boat, and when it is time for Gabby to join in, she miscalculates her landing, ending in the water instead of the boat. They both laugh it off and head toward Miami to complete their mission. Meanwhile, Rosa is cleaning Gabby's things around the house and she stumbles across Gabby's laptop, with Marta Sandoval's musical event opened on the search tab. Rosa believes Gabby could never go alone, but when she finds out Gabby proved her wrong, she fumes downstairs and grabs the car keys to go find Gabby. In doing so, she catches a glimpse of Carlos in the photo frames, and she misses him terribly because he would know how to deal with their daughter. Also, she smiles to herself when she remembers where Gabby got her love of music from. Yes, her father. She swooshes past the traffic and finally manages to catch up with the bus heading to Miami. Her efforts to get in touch with Gabby are proving futile because all her calls keep being directed to voicemail. She threatens Gabby that she will be in big trouble soon, and honks the horn impatiently at the bus, asking him to pull over. The bus driver decides to speed things up and pays no heed to Rosa. Next, Vivo is somewhat skeptical of Gabi's supposed shortcut, but since he has no other choice, he complies. They reach the Everglades, and as they row their boat through the channels, Vivo realizes Gabi is not as annoying as she seemed initially. He sings about his feelings regarding this journey he is on. When an alligator yanks his oar, he gets scared and runs up front. Gabi notices that Vivo is apparently scared, and she tells him that her late father used to sing to her whenever she would feel scared. She offers to teach him drumming, not knowing that Vivo is a maestro himself. When he plays his stick so well, Gabby thinks it is because she must be such a good teacher. They play and sing their hearts out, and the journey seems better, but suddenly the weather changes. They notice all the birds rushing forward speedily as if a storm is about to begin. Gabby tries to calm down Vivo that it is just a little sprinkle of rain, but suddenly heavy rain starts pouring on them, sweeping the boat along dangerously. The gusty winds dislodge the song from under Vivo's hat that flies away in the strong winds. Desperate to retrieve it, Gabby and Vivo both lunge at the song, but this results in Vivo being stuck in a tree while Gabby falls back to her boat, with the song held securely in her hand. The water current is so strong that Gabby and the boat disappear from Vivo's vision and he is left stranded. Since he does not trust Gabby a lot, he is worried sick about the song, even though Gabby promised she will keep it safe. He climbs the tree till he can get a clear view of the forest and shouts for Gabby in all directions, but all in vain. After he loses his footing, he falls down flat on the forest floor, and this is when he comes across a roseate duckbill called Dankarino who is digging his own grave. He has lost hope in love and after waiting for eight seasons, he deems it fit to hibernate for the rest of his life. Vivo tries to ask for Dankarino's help after introducing himself, 
but as it happens, Dankarino is really too upset. Vivo decides to help Dankarino, in exchange for his help in finding Gabby. He takes up Dankarino to the girl of his dreams, Valentina, and forces him to introduce himself and compliment her. It goes well and the two get along quite well, eventually flying away with their eyes locked on each other. Vivo is happy to have united two lovebirds, but he gets upset when he remembers that Dankarino left without helping him find Gabby. Meanwhile, Marta Sandoval arrives at Mambo Cabana where she is received warmly. The staff is really honored that Marta chose them for her final show. While she rehearses, she asks if there is any news of Andres, because she is literally looking forward to seeing her friend after all this time. Next, we see Gabby calling for Vivo from her raft. She realizes the song is missing, and frantically searches for it when suddenly she notices that she is not alone. Becky, the blonde girl scout, and her cronies have managed to locate her and demand she gives up the kinkajou so they can quarantine it. On learning that the kinkajou is missing, Becky demands that Gabby help them find Vivo. Naturally, Gabby refuses because she wants nothing to do with the Sand Dollar Scouts, but when Becky reveals the song, Gabby has no choice but to comply. Meanwhile, Vivo navigates through the forest, unable to process the situation he is in. As he is loudly voicing his frustrations, a chameleon signals him to be quiet, but he gets offended and starts talking even louder. This attracts the attention of Lutador, a mighty Burmese python, who reigns over the forest animals with his terror. Whenever any animal makes any noise, he eats them up, hence maintaining silence on this side of the forest. He names Vivo as noisy and tries to eat him, but Vivo escapes with the help of his tail. Lutador chases Vivo and when he reaches the end of a tree, Vivo decides to jump off in an effort to save himself. Just then, Dankarino scoops Vivo up in the air, saving him right in time. Valentina and Dankarino decide to take him to Gabby via air in exchange for helping them connect to each other. Next, Gabby pretends to search for Vivo just so she can get the song back from Becky. When she notices something moving in the tall grass, she assumes it to be Vivo and starts whispering to him regarding the song being with Becky but she has an idea how to retrieve it. Suddenly, Lutador the giant python emerges from the grass, scaring Gabby who runs back to the girls. They try to escape on the boat but Lutador gets in their way. After running back and forth, they hide in a giant tree's branches and throw things at Lutador from Gabi's backpack, which angers him further, and he starts constricting the branch cage they are hiding in. Vivo and the duckbills hear the girls screaming and they plummet down on Lutador, to save the girls. Vivo manages to get the python tied in huge knots around a tree. Everyone rejoices in their win against Lutador, even Becky. However, the chase earlier led the song to fall into the water, and by the time Vivo finds it, the paper is completely destroyed. This shatters Vivo's spirit because it was something so close to his buddy Andres. Vivo is overridden with guilt that he turned his back on him in his final moments. This song was the only way to redeem himself. H tells Dankarino that he should get back to Cuba since all is lost. Suddenly, he finds out that Gabby had memorized the lyrics from her uncle's song. Since Vivo knows the melody, he lights up because together with Gabby, he can reconstruct the song. They head the boat back to Miami so Marta can know what Andres felt for her the entire time. Gabby writes the song as Vivo plays the notes on a piano on her phone, and finally, they get to Mambo Cabana. Since she does not have any ticket, Gabby sneaks inside, pursued by security. Her mom, Rosa, is furious and orders her to stop her act this minute, but Gabby is determined to accomplish the mission. However, when security blocks her way, Gabby sends Vivo to go on without her and finds Marta to give the song to her. Meanwhile, Marta learns about the passing of Andres and that shatters her heart. She does not think she can go on with the concert after such terrible news. When Vivo enters her room, she recognizes him from the picture of Andres in the newspaper. He gives her the song which makes her realize Andres' love for her. She goes on to the stage to perform this final song, but not before telling Vivo how proud Andres would have been of him. Vivo finally finds the closure he had been looking for. Next, Rosa is seen scolding Gabby for her reckless behavior. She does not believe anything about the song and Vivo. Despite trying her best, she feels like she is failing as a parent. Gabby reveals she never got the chance to tell her father that she loves him, so this letter was very important to her. This is when Rosa understands her daughter better and together with Vivo, they attend the concert where Marta sings Andre's song. In the end, Vivo decides to live in Florida with Gabby and Rosa. Since they become friends with Marta, Gabby, and Vivo put up their own show with Marta in their city, entertaining the crowds, just like once Andres and Vivo did. This is where the movie ends.